uh, can be done. Let's discuss this. Tobias Such is with us, an expert on terrorism in the Middle East, and journalist as well. Uh, Junior Lennox will join us in just a second, a director of human security, an expert on Islamic terrorism, senior advisor at the Israel Project. Lennox, can I get your thoughts on, on this as well? As we ask the question, what steps should cities and resorts across Europe now take to prevent these attacks? I mean, we're not really talking barriers. According to Tobias Hutch, we're, we're, we're talking about uh, a whole change of... Uh, a, a, a political approach in the West. Yeah, good morning. Um, I do agree, actually. I mean, uh, one thing we have to understand is if you look at Spain, for instance, it was not that Spain was not prepared for what happened. Spain has a long history with terrorism, not just Islamic extremism, also separatist terrorism. Um, they were prepared after 2004, the Madrid bombings, they put in place new measures, new security measures to prevent these types of attacks from taking place. But the truth is that terrorists have an incredible ability to adapt. So just because we are moving forward and, you know, having new ideas how to prevent these things doesn't mean they don't have new ideas to carry out attacks. So, you know, they fly planes into skyscrapers, we introduce tighter security measures at airports, or um, they suddenly use cars to run into people and we put up barriers. But the truth is there's only so much we can do until we reach the point we are creating an environment where we no longer recognize our way of life. So your caller is absolutely correct to say uh, what we need to do is we need to tackle the root causes behind that. That's the ideology of radical Islam and that is the only solution to the problem. And how long does that take? Um, probably generations because you have to understand this has built up over generations um, and um, you know these young people they are already radicalized I mean most terrorists we are looking at there are between 20 30 35 um, they are already radicalized and de-radicalizing people is much more difficult than preventing people from being radicalized in the first place so the best thing that we can do is now looking at how people become radicalized online radicalizations in prisons in mosques in Islamic schools um, and try to introduce measures that are preventive uh, in these environments and not sort of thinking that more and more security will solve the problem. These measures are always passive. They are always in reaction to what has already happened, and that is not going to save us. So, Tobias, well, I've got, I'll, I'll just, let me just interject for a second, because on the text, there's a, a fellow called Benny, who is in North London in Barnet, says, OK, so massacres in Egypt, African massacres, all in the name of Islam and nothing to do with foreign policy. These are just pathetic uh, uh, excuses. Can you comment on that? But, but, but the, the, uh, they, they have, they're based on the foreign policy. They're, they're, they have the arguments. They, they say, oh, look to the Middle East, look to, to Afghanistan, look to Iraq. The West is against us. Mm. And, and uh, all the arguments are found there. And, we, we, and, and then they look, they look the support of al-Maliki, the prime minister of Iraq, by, by the U.S. government. Al-Maliki, um, he, he, he made big crimes against uh, the, the Sunni Arabs in Mosul. Yeah, to, to buy such, I've got to leave you there. I've got to give the last word to Julie Lennertz on this. And, and can, I, can I ask you, and I'm sure you, you've got a lot of comments to make on what Tobias uh, has said, but could you address the issue of political correctness and whether we in the West are ever going to be able to have proper conversations that are actually going to lead to proper solutions? Well, actually, you know, I, I, would, I, yeah, I, I want to say just very quickly, I completely disagree uh, with what he just said. And, and I said, and to, 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 as a matter of fact, it disagrees with that. Um, as well. I don't think anyone is disputing that foreign policy plays somewhat of a role, but, uh, you know, um, ISIS has said very clearly in its magazine that they are fighting us because they hate us, because we don't embrace Islam, and that foreign policy is secondary. And that actually also leads me to your question, because if we ever want to have a proper debate about this and leave aside the PC culture, we have to understand, we have to understand the enemy, and we don't do that for as long as we always try to find excuses. As some of your callers before were, in my view, dangerously close to justifying that, you know, with our actions in the Middle East. That's not good enough. We also have to look at the ideology behind it. We have to name radical Islam as a problem, whether people like it or not. But as long as we don't do that, as long as we don't have an open debate about that, we will not solve the problem. Julie Lennertz, Tobias Hatch, thank you very much indeed. How about this?